Hello, my name is Roger Watson and I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Nurse Education and Practice, which is published by Elsevier. I want to talk to you today briefly about what editors are looking for when a manuscript is submitted. In doing so, I hope to help you to avoid some of the common pitfalls that prevent your manuscript getting into the review system. If a manuscript is not addressing what the editor wants when he or she sees it initially, it's likely to be desk rejected. That means it will come back to you, probably without any explanation as to why it has been rejected, but just with a note to say that it's not suitable. This is because, especially in very busy journals, editors don't have much time to read articles in detail if they don't meet the guidance. So in fact, it often depends less on the substance of the article than on the way that it's presented. So what editors are expecting when they see a manuscript is quite simple. They're expecting it to follow the guidance for the journal. And I have to say that nearly half of the articles that busy editors receive, certainly in my case, are rejected simply on the basis that they do not meet the guidance. So it's very important to get this right at the submission stage. And there is no real excuse for not doing so because the guidance is all published online. All journals are online these days. If you go to the landing page, the most important thing that you can look at is the link to the guidance for authors. And I always strongly encourage people before they even begin to write a manuscript to be absolutely clear which journal it's going to be going to initially. In that way, you can check the guidance and you can write the article according to the guidance. Clearly, if your article is rejected, you may have to rework it using some new guidance. But again, be clear what that guidance is before you start reworking the article and uh, submitting it again. So, what does the guidance tell us? Well, the guidance ranges from some fairly superficial things, which is what the editor-in-chief is looking for initially, down to some more detailed aspects, which will probably be checked by someone at the journal desk afterwards. And again, in some cases, they may also be able to reject your uh, manuscript if it doesn't meet the guidance. But at the most superficial level, we're looking clearly for uh, articles that fit the journal. So for example, my journal is about education, so we're not looking for clinical articles. And uh, some, uh, some journals are purely clinical, so they won't be looking for educational articles. So do make sure that you know what the journal is about and what its mission is about and what its aim is about. That will be given in the guidance. At the next level, uh, you need to structure your article your, uh, properly uh, in accordance with the way that the guidance specifies. So the manuscript needs to be uh, of the appropriate length and it needs to be divided into the appropriate sections. Uh, in other words, it has to have the structure that the guidance specifies. So for example, uh, all journals will ask you to submit an abstract with your article and in the vast majority of journals now, these days, the article abstract should be structured and it has to be structured using exactly the headings, the subheadings that the journal specifies. So for example, if the abstract asks you for a name, a background, a design, method, results and conclusion, and then keywords, make sure that all of these things are included. Don't put objectives if it asks for aim, for example. Don't put the background before the aim. Have all the headings and subheadings that the journal guidance requires and have them in the correct order. Now the same applies to the main manuscript that will be similarly uh, structured, probably with an introduction and a background, methods, results, discussion and conclusion, and perhaps one or two other subheadings like limitations or uh, future research or implications. These things will all be given in the guidance. And another useful thing that you can do 
is to go to a recent issue of the journal and take a look at how articles are structured and make sure that the kind of article that you want to submit is structured correctly. For example, empirical articles may be structured differently from review articles. Again, all this is given in the guidance. So that's at a fairly uh, superficial level, getting the length and the layout correct and having a title which clearly indicates that your article fits the journal. Most busy journal editors will not have time to read more than the abstract and if the abstract isn't correct they probably will not read any more and they may well desk reject your article. So it's crucial especially that you get the abstract right and at least the paper may then get into the reviewing system no guarantee that it will be accepted but of course if it doesn't get into the reviewing system it will have no chance of being accepted. So I'm repeating myself but just make sure that you get the uh, these initial fairly superficial things correct and at least show the editors and the editor-in-chief and other people working on the journal that you've paid them the compliment of looking at, at the guidance. Now beyond that of course the guidance will have many more details for example the specific referencing system to be used, make sure that you get that right. It'll have a lot of detailed guidance about how to present abbreviations and things like that. I'm not saying that these are not important, but many of these things can be fixed afterwards if you get them right. But do try to get them right at submission. The more you get right, the more likely your article is to go into the, into the review system.